Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, and uh, thank you for tuning in, tuning in to our Bible in Focus Live. Okay, so before before we start our live stream today, <clears throat> if you're watching, if you're watching through Facebook, um, we would like to request that you you could comment on on our video on our live stream. You could like and also please share our live stream to everyone else. That way we could be able to to share God's word and for others to also to experience what it is to listen how the word is exposited for their own spiritual benefit. Now, <clears throat> if you're watching through the, the YouTube channel, you, YouTube channel, I mean, sorry about that, uh, click on like, comment, and also subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click that notification bell so that you'd be updated every time that we are live stream. Okay, and that way the algorithms of the social media platforms would allow us to 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 grow, to to move to move on to certain regions where people could also hear God's word being exposited to them. Okay, and also uh, we would like to take this this opportunity to to thank everyone to thank you to thank everyone who are watching um, the Bible in Focus live. Okay, those who are in the United States, I, I thank you very much for watching us and also for supporting, for supporting our ministry. <clears throat> if you have any questions on how you would like to support, um, the uh, the details are in the description part of this of the live stream of the video. And if you have any questions on, in regards to to the ongoing. Uh, Membership recruitment of the Seed of God Ministry. We are open to, to, to talk to you about it. You could contact us after the live stream today. And, of course, we would like to remind you as well that we are doing our Bible exposition every Saturday in the Archdiocese of Manila. That will be one thirty to three thirty at Pope Pius in uh, Manila. And hopefully, if you're, you are in the area, you could please stop by and be a part of one of our services. And we promise you, your life will change for the better. <clears throat> we encourage everyone to, to join us in our Bible exposition. And if possible, of course, if you'd like to have an active participation in the ministry, we encourage you as well to, to have a part, to be a member of the City of God ministry. There are a lot of details that we could share with you, but we, uh, so that, I mean, after the live stream, just contact us if you have any inquiries, and we, and we would be happy to to share with you what the Seed of God Ministry is all about. Okay, so on with our program. <clears throat> Thinking for subject matter for today's live stream. Proved to be hard. I could always hit the books, but this program, this Bible in Focus Live, is not created that way. It's real life situation, graded through the lens of scriptures. The time, the time as I was writing this manuscript is seven fifty seven twelve in the evening on the seventeenth of June, which was a Monday. And as I recall, a few months ago, when I was invited to attend um, a meeting, forgive me for I'm not sure if I'm allowed to share all the details of that, of that meeting, but one topic of discussion then was that the priority for every local church congregation from all different local churches is what the synodality brought forward by Pope Francis. The theme of their synod being the call to synodality compared to biblical exegesis and expository preaching, it is like application is being given more weight. This leads us to the question that does the matter of faith, I mean, should the matter of faith be isolated or separate from life? I mean, 
Should the matter of faith, okay, should the matter of faith be separate from life? La last time I checked, faith and life is joined together. One cannot exist without the other. Should there be a bifurcating line between the two? Yes, a clear distinction should be made, but it does not mean that it should be treated separately. <clears throat> every, Christian should, every Christian should know this, that every matter of faith is connected to our life. Hi, this is Christopher Nino Arca, and you're watching Bible in Focus, where we will talk about our experiences and human conditions in light to sacred scripture. What I would like, what I would rather like to focus here is the treatment of everyone about this topic. This perspective that somehow teaches that this should be two separate concepts. Yes, there is a relation between the two. But it does not mean that one should follow the other. But, but honestly speaking, both affects each other. And, and so it does not mean it can be treated separately. And truthfully, our life should be aligned and should follow our faith. The, the preconception that faith and life are two separate concepts and distinguishable, meaning can and should be separate, is the product of agnosticism and atheism. This notion would support their claim that human life has no need of God. And yet, we all know that scriptures say the other thing. And we should know that every word of scriptures is inspired by God. And, it, and that it is God breathed. God breathed. And so it means it stands above every human notion. Let me share with you a cer certain text. John 15 verses 4 to 5. Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit from itself unless it abides in the vine. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Apart from Christ, apart from our faith in Christ, we are nothing. It is that simple. We cannot do away with our faith. Nor can we separate faith from our lifestyle. It is just as the same with atheists. They live their lives as if there is no God. You can see obviously how they are with their lives. I mean, but for us Christians, our lives are bound by our faith. We cannot truly live and bear fruit if we are disconnected from God. <clears throat> what is this synodality that it should take precedence? That it should be the priority besides learning biblical truths? about the matters of the faith. To quote from the article of the Laudato Si movement, it says here, Since the beginning of his pontificate, Pope Francis has been highlighting the importance of cultivating synodality in our church. In his own words, synodality is the path which God expects of the church of the third millennium because it is a constitutive element of the church. That is why Pope Francis has called for a synod on synodality happening from 2021 to 2024. 
If you ask me, nothing precedes anything from this text. Understanding synodality is still within the context of scriptures. Every synodality also needs biblical formation. That's the way it is. You have that impression that you should know this synodality as what Pope Francis first before even learning what scripture has to say. It's like synodality first, then scriptures next. That is a very wrong notion. The concept, the idea of stewardship, of creation, of companionship, that came from the scriptures. Yahweh had us take care of creation. Synodality, where we, as the people of God, journey together in a common mission as followers of Christ. That also requires gospel preaching. You have to understand that every word of scriptures, before you can actually fully grasp what is the essence of synodality. See, you have to understand every words of scriptures first before you can fully grasp what is the essence of synodality. You see, it still requires biblical formation. This basically needs scriptures being exposited to you. This is for your own good. Like every moral teaching of Christ, Paul reminds us the importance of scriptures. I know I've been, I, I always um, cite this text, but it is worth citing every now and then because people keep on forgetting the importance of God's word. Second Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 to 17. All scripture is God breathed and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be equipped, having been thoroughly equipped for every good work. In essence, the call to synodality of Pope Francis is basically how the early church in the book to in the book of Acts was, everyone is together, communal, every person uplifting each other. This means synodality's core idea, okay, this means that the core idea of synodality was already lived, applied before. We as Christians need to understand scriptures in order to fully grasp synodality as Yahweh prescribes. Because synodality is also a matter of faith. Here in chapter 4, 2 Timothy, verses 1 to 4, I'd like to share this with you as well. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled. They will accumulate, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. Paul here lays down the framework we are to live as Christians. These words breeds forth the growth of synodality. These words provide the very foundation that is required of a real and lasting synodality. Now, 
regarding the concern raised during the meeting? Well, I do believe what you heard so far. Okay, I do believe what you have heard so far. Biblical formation is very much needed to have a full grasp of the synodality Pope Francis is talking about. Every Christian is encouraged to stay in touch with the scriptures. Get plugged in with a community that is faithful to the scriptures and does expository preaching. If you are in a community that says reading scripture is not really that important, that serves as a warning for you. That serves as a warning for you. We are in a community to worship the Lord together and to hear the words of God <clears throat> exposited and preached for your spiritual growth. All preaching should be faithful as to what God says, and that's in the Bible. But besides being in church, attending the services, every faithful Christian is called to always be in touch with God through scriptures. Why? Well, let me tell you, that is for your own spiritual growth. Take, for instance, this Bereans in the book of Acts. Let me... Uh, Turn the pages. That's in Acts 17. Acts 17 verses 10 to 12. And the brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now these were more noble-minded than those in Thessalonica. For they received the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Therefore, many of them believed, along with not a few prominent Greek women and men. We have Paul here preaching in Berea. But here you would see how in touch the Bereans were with their scriptures. They verify whatever Paul preached them about Christ. And that is through reading of the scriptures. Only then were they fully grasp and understand the gospel of Christ. Then they, at that specific time, they became believers of the way. That should be our attitude towards scriptures. And so about this synodality, get in touch with the Bible, with the very words of God. Get plugged in a community that truly ex exposits and preaches the very words of scripture. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Let us come together, close our eyes, and feel the Spirit of the Lord pouring down upon us. <clears throat> we come to believe, O Lord. Open our eyes, our minds, and our hearts. Enter our very being, O Lord. Let us truly form your spiritual body so we can truly share you to the rest of the world. <coughs> your words, O Lord, to tonight, it struck our hearts. It's very beating, beats for you. Heal us, O Lord, and heal our land. This we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Again, so before I let you go, we uh, thank you very much for staying with us here in our Bible in Focus live. <coughs> and uh, uh, just a brief reminder again, I mean, 
about our membership and also our Bible exposition every every Saturday in Pope Pius. And this is for the Archdiocese of Manila. Again, we encourage everyone, if you're in the area, stop by and be a part of one of our services. Stop by. Experience biblical preaching, expository preaching, and we promise you, your life will change for the better. And, uh, okay, so uh, you could contact us regarding our uh, recruitment membership and Hopefully, you could be a part of the City of God ministry. All right? So, thank you very much. Take care and God bless.